the story actually ended up developing a little bit later because because in the beginning everyone thought like okay this was someone this is maybe a close family member of someone he killed or a close friend of someone he killed or maybe this was he ripped off someone from a drug deal you know whatever 30 years ago and they're you know they never let it go and so forth but then you start to find out the real reason and it was actually kind of almost stupid <laughs> where I guess there was a road rage incident with just some random guy in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Something happened between the two of them where, I don't know, Alpo screamed at him or disrespected him or whatever else. Mm -hmm. And this guy basically, you know, you know, after they went through his phone later on, he had basically been like keeping track of Alpo and, and figuring out where he was and, you know, sort of following him in a, in a, a certain type of way. And then on Halloween night, he just happened to see him pulled out a pistol and just unloaded on him and killed him. And I guess the guy is actually in Rikers right now uh, mm -hmm. facing these charges. When you found out that's what happened, I mean, you heard the story, right? Yeah, I ended up hearing that story, yeah. When you found out that this is the way that he died, what did you think? Man, I, I, like I tell everybody, man, all cubs be turn, coming to lions, you know what I'm saying? So I just think he slept on his prey, you know what I'm saying? And, and Shorty did his homework, you know, and took him out of his misery. Yeah, and at the time that he died, uh, he didn't really see a lot of RIPs or, you know, yeah. he's in a better place or, yeah. you know, he's looking down at us right now, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really like people were glad that he was dead. Right. Um, Rich Porter's niece uh, said, we waited a long time for this day to come and we are happy. That's mm -hmm. why we're out here celebrating, drinking champagne. Mm -hmm. Everybody's reaction right now is celebratory. Mm -hmm. It's a celebration for Harlem, period. Every dog has their day. Now my uncle can finally rest in peace 32 years later. It's just that pain my mother felt all these years. I've been feeling the pain with her. Every dog has their day and today was his. I believe in karma and I'm glad that I was here to witness it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I interviewed AZ Faisan, who was, you know, his, his partner at one point. Mm -hmm. He felt that he just killed himself. You know, mm -hmm. that, 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 that Alpo was a dude that just could not let go of the fame he couldn't let go of him being a snitch. You know, he wanted to prove people that he still somehow won in this game. Mm -hmm. And that's why he continued to hang out and, and, and be like on the block and everything else like mm -hmm. that. He could have really lived, if he had stayed in Maine the whole time and witnessed protection, mm -hmm. he'd be alive right now, eating a lobster roll, chilling. If it happened, Alpo killed himself to me, bro. Killed himself, bro. He didn't accept the loss. You lost in the game. They put you in Maine, gave you a decent job. If it was me, if the shoe was on my foot, I would have stayed in Maine, worked my job, and stayed away from that world, period, bro. I got another chance, bro. All the shit I did, Thank you, God, bro. I'm going to stay up here and try to create a whole new life. If someone want to do my story, get at me, make my money, and I would have never came back to this shit, bro. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I, I can feel the Rich Porter family pain, you know what I'm saying, all the way down to they, the little boy got his finger cut off, right? But the, the Rich Porter joint kind of hit me a certain way, you know what I'm saying? I met him. We interacted five or six times, you know what I'm saying? And he actually, when I first ever met him, pulled me to the side while Alpo was running around driving a little Bronco with a loud horn, you know, fucking with his little neighborhood. And he said, man, look, man, I don't know a lot about you. I heard a lot about you, man, but he don't know what type of town he is. Whatever you do, man, try to look out for him, man, because he, he, you know, he, he can get a little happy-go-lucky. So to me, I thought that was honorable for him to pull over, you know, a, a dude basically blanket and, and, and emphasize that. So when I heard he killed him, it took, it fucked me up. So you're saying that Rich Porter was actually looking out for Alpo and making sure that he's good with the people around him. Right. Only yeah, to have the it, same guy. Right. That's his first time meeting me. He only heard of me through Alpo with some girls that he was dealing with in D.C. that he did his research. So he pulled me to the side. I was like, man, man, do me a favor, man. Just look out for him, man. You know what I'm saying? He a little wild, a little happy-go-lucky. And I just thought mm -hmm. that was, I thought that was special. I always had a special report for him in my heart for sure. Right. 
and were you actually doing business with Rich Porter as well? No, no. I just every time I go up there, I just I, we just kick it. We meet up and just chop it, kick it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone loved Rich Porter. I mean, when Rich Porter died, it was like a tragedy in Harlem. And here's this guy that's like looking out for Alpo, only to have Alpo kill him over over some money, really. Right, right. Yeah, it was a shitty, shitty excuse too. <laughs> 